So um, the story goes, I don't remember this because I was only two and a half years old. They gave me a quarter for standing and playing with the band. And I first thing I did was I immediately put it in the F hole on the string bass because, you know, thinking it was like a jukebox, you know, where you put the quarter in and you get more music out. And it took the guy like five minutes of shaking his bass side to side to get the quarter out of there. And he had to get it out because it rattled when he played his bass. So, but they, uh, that, that's kind of, that's kind of uh, what, what an early style Polish band. And this would have been, this was from, the, at, in 56 when this picture was taken, this kind of band was almost dying, totally dying out. I mean, by the, by the end of the 50s, this kind of band was gone. Um, to explain what a polka is, a polka is a, is a peppy, happy uh, dance in 4-4 four, four or 2-4 meter. So there's uh, four counts to a measure and it gets people out on the dance floor. It's like a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, da, 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 da. In polka music, you'll find trumpets, saxes, and clarinets, accordions, some kind of bass, either a bass guitar, uh, a MIDI bass on an accordion or a tuba, and drums. And that's kind of the essentials. Most polka bands have some mixture of those. When polka first started here, the music was very fast. Um, there's a dance called the Chicago Hop that you would not have been able to do that to with the early polkas. The tempo was a tempo of 120 or faster. It was extremely fast. Um, back in the 60s, uh, a gentleman's uh, band called Little Wally slowed the music down so that people could dance to it better. There's a lot of different varieties. There's Polish style, which is the kind I play. Uh, there's the Czech style, which is more of an umpa kind of sound. Germans have their own style. Slovenian people have their own style. So, but it's, yeah, it's enjoyed by a lot of different ethnic groups. People that came to the U.S., uh, especially in this part of the country, came from poor rural areas of Poland. Polka traveled across the Atlantic Ocean in the 1840s, settling in New York, where it grew in popularity. By the 1850s, it hit the U.S. by storm, spreading across the country to places like Baltimore, Cincinnati, and New Orleans. The 1850s also brought polka to Nebraska as Czechs fled worsening economic conditions. Drawn to the Midwest by the promise of farmland, these immigrants settled in Nebraska, establishing new communities and bringing new traditions like polka. So everything you did, everything you did was was intertwined with the music, and there was there was no separating culture and music. It was they were all together. So, for example, from my grandfather, I learned a bunch of songs that have no names. But for example, one we call the house to the church polka because it just doesn't have any other name. Back in the old days when they had weddings, there were no halls back in, in those little towns in Nebraska. They would go out to the farm and they'd build a platform, a wooden platform for dancing out at the, at the home of the bride. And then the, the horse and buggy would go out to get the bride from her house and the band would follow along in a horse-drawn wagon behind the bride and the wedding party from the house. And they would, they would take the the bride from the country, out in the country, on the farm, back to the church. So this particular song that he taught me was the song that they used for that trip. That's why we call it the House to the Church Polka. Has no polka traveled with these Eastern European immigrants from rural areas to urban centers like Omaha, as they followed the jobs in stockyards, packing houses, and breweries. So if you've got a farm, a plot of farm land, and you've got 10 kids, they can't sustain all of them as adults, and so they, they came to Omaha to uh, get jobs in factories and uh, the railroad. Or, so your grandfather worked at the brewery, and so he came to Omaha. Yeah. He would... Eddie Janik was a popular and influential Czech-American polka musician and band leader from Omaha during the mid-20th century. The Janik family produced a number of other prominent polka musicians as well. After his untimely death in 1973, Eddie Janik was elected to the Nebraska Polka Hall of Fame in 1976. Why? Well, because it was the 
melting pot of, uh, of all the ethnicities. Um, and the draw there was the packing houses that yes. had jobs. Job. Um, yeah, that, was, that was the big thing there. Uh, you had uh, Armors, Wilsons, uh, Cudahy, and Swifts, the four big packing houses, all headquartered there with the world's largest stockyards. With the Czech immigrants, fleeing from their own home country, coming here, a lot of them, um, well, I shouldn't say a lot of them, but some of them wanted to kind of put, put aside everything from their old life and become Americans. So a lot of them changed the spellings of their name to make it more American. So they wanted to, to fit in and kind of pushed aside some elements of their, their culture, uh, maybe didn't speak the language in their home. So there was a segment of the, of the immigrants that felt that way. I had a great grandfather like yeah. that. Yeah. Didn't want to he was an American. Right. Immigrants brought with them traditions that reinforced their memories of the homeland. However, as generations passed, some of these traditions fade. Like it, well, because when I was young, it was everywhere. You had, like I said, 15, 20 bands. Uh, you could find polka music. Every weekend, sometimes two nights a week, uh, just about everywhere. Uh, Soko Hall on 13th and Martha had a dance every Saturday night for years and years and years. Um, when the Polish home was at 25th and L, they had a dance every Saturday night um, for many, many years. A lot of bars in South Omaha had, had music on Fridays and Saturdays. Influenced by technological advancements in music and drastic changes in American music culture, polka's popularity declined. So to give you an example of the effect that DJs had, like I said, our band, we played, we played regular dances and we played a lot of weddings. And like I said, about 60, 60, 65 jobs a year. Within three years of having DJs come out, our dance jobs, the number of times we played a year, dropped from 65 to 15. Of course, I've heard of the Beatles and Beatlemania, and that really changed the complexion of, of popular music in our country, and it really influenced polka music, too, uh, because now people had you know, something that was totally different, and especially younger people of that generation maybe didn't want to listen to the music of their parents' generation. Maybe they didn't think polka music was cool, or they didn't want to listen to it anymore, because there's something else that they could identify with them more easily. Nice. Uh, it would sure be nice if uh, we had some more younger people involved. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I was 12 years old when I joined Lenny's band. Lenny's band was the youngest band in existence because Lenny's guys were probably six or seven years older than me. So they were all, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. So we were the youngest polka band in Omaha. And my guys are still one of the youngest polka bands in Omaha, 50 years later. Which but, is, but back, you know, 50 years ago, every parish in South Omaha had its own ethnic makeup. So St. Stan's was, was a Polish parish. Uh, St. Peter and Paul was a Croatian parish. Uh, uh, St. Mary's on 36th and Q was an Irish parish. St. Francis was a Polish parish. ICC was a Polish parish. Assumption was Czech. Uh, Our Lady Guadalupe was uh, Hispanic, but every... St. Stan's Festival has been going on for a long time. Every year, the third Sunday in August, St. Stan, St. Stanislaus Festival is the biggest Polish festival in town. It is on 41st and J Street. I encourage you to go. It's, I will also tell you that I think they sell the most beer out of any festival there is. Uh, eight hours of polka music and fun and games and people. It's like a it's like a family reunion. I mean, I one see. One was when Peony Park was still around. Uh, there was there was a guy who had a radio show, a polka radio show in Omaha, by the name of Big Joe Sedlick, and he started this polka festival in Columbus because that's where he was from. And when it outgrew Columbus, he moved it to Peony Park. And uh, so he would have, this would be on basically Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and he would have like 60 polka bands uh, on those four days, and it was always the second weekend in September. And it was here for probably, probably 15, 18 years, and it would draw people from all over the U.S. The venues in Omaha, uh, there, were, there were a couple main ones. Uh, 
the, the building that is now uh, El Museo Latino used to be called the Polish Home. And the Polish Home is simply a, uh, a Polish cultural organization, uh, but that building had, you know, it was shaped in a U, and on, on the, the tips of each U, there was a South Hall and a North Hall, and in the middle was a retail bar, and then, uh, so they would have tons of wedding receptions there. That's a place we played quite a bit for weddings and for dances. The other place that was a really uh, very popular wedding place uh, in South Omaha was Immaculate Conception Church's Hall. South Omaha hasn't changed. It just, the, well, the, the main thing that's changed is with et, which ethnic groups are there. So, like, South Omaha is mostly Hispanic now, and, and yes, it's changed, but what the Hispanic people are enjoying in South Omaha are, are exactly the same things that the Polish and Czech people and German people enjoyed, you know, 60, 70 years ago. It's their town, their part of town, it's their it's a place where their culture and their way of life uh, can be shared with their neighbors and friends. And, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, moan the loss of, you know, that South Omaha. But to me, it's not, it's just a different generation of people. It's still the same feel, you know, it's just a different group of people. For these musicians, polka isn't just music, but a part of their heritage, integral to who they are. Omaha's remaining polka musicians are passionate about their music and enjoy sharing it with the community. So how was I inspired to start? My dad played the accordion also, and I have pictures to share of him playing the accordion in his high school yearbook, and I have the same thing in mind. Um, I was inspired as he was playing when I was a, a child, three, four years old. My dad would play, and my sister and I would, would just love to sit and listen or, or jump around on the floor. Um, and uh, when my dad was at work one day, I found his accordion. And I, start, I snuck uh, playing it. I started learning how to play White Christmas, memorizing the swirls on the ivory keys. And he caught me, and I thought I was in big trouble. He was a policeman. I thought I was going to be arrested. And, uh, he says, we're going to have to get you lessons sometime. I think I was about five years old then. So I started taking lessons when I was eight and started playing polkas when I was 10. When I was a young adult, I belonged to the uh, Polonaires band. I, sorry, I joined the Polonaires band. And the Polonaires uh, were pretty notorious uh, in the Midwest back in the 70s, and they, they grew in popularity. And we used to go on bus trips to places like Minneapolis, Buffalo, Chicago, Milwaukee, um, those places that had Polish festivals that were that had, had really a uh, concentration of Polish people and really good bands. And those bus trips were among the most fun times that we ever had. The first picture that I have with the Polonaires, in which I still had a full head of hair with no beard, back in my younger times. And yes, we got to dress in these wonderful outfits when we... I joined a polka band when I was 14. But before then, I was playing uh, polka music with another popular musician in Omaha, uh, Bob Zagosta. He and I would play in my mom and dad's basement. We would play polka music on Saturdays. And my dad would encourage us, and then he would reward us by going and getting Dinker's hamburgers for us. So Dinker's goes all the way back 50 plus years ago. Well, the other thing about South Omaha is you lived within, you know, the family group was really close. So my grandmother lived across the street. My uncle lived next door. My uncle lived next door to him. My uncle lived next door to him. So I can remember my grandmother, um, sorry. I can remember my grandmother telling my dad, no Polish, you in America now. And that was a thinking back then, but what she didn't realize was that it just totally wipes out your culture forever because you can't get it back. And uh, that's why like, uh, so there's a, there's a, a group of young uh, Hispanic kids that are in a mari mariachi band that we got to know. And I tell them all the time, I said, don't worry about, you know, don't listen to those people who tell you to sing in English. Keep your Spanish going, you know, as long as you possibly can because once you switch, you never get it back. Sorry. 
Despite the influences of DJs and rock and roll, polka players in Omaha remain hopeful for the future. With the resurgence of bookings and a rise in popularity, polka is once again regaining recognition, and while it may never return to its heyday peak, polka is om in Omaha is still very much alive. And now it seems like, lately, it's been like the last five or six years, it's been coming back. Uh, last year, we played more last year than we probably have in 15 years, mainly just because these Oktoberfests are coming back. People really enjoy the, having the camaraderie back and forth with live musicians. They, I, think, I think people now see, um, see the loss of their heritage as uh, something that they really need to work hard to actively seek it out in order not to lose it. And it's, it's just been a whole total change in thought about that. And I think the influx of Hispanic people in the South Omaha has kind of made people of European backgrounds realize that um, if you don't work at preserving your heritage, it's gone. I can give you a cliche on what polka is. And what Big Joe used to say is polka music is happy music for happy people. What I'll tell you is polka music, to me, brings happiness out in me when I see other people happy.